<laughs> All right, so bus life never gets old. So today, um, we drove the bus back. We're, today was supposed to be a big solar install day. Um, anyway, we're driving the bus back and I go to park it and all of a sudden, fluid just starts pouring out of the engine, like oil, just pouring out onto the ground. And so I'm backing it up and I'm leaving a trail and Michelle's like, there's engine oil pouring out of the back. And so we're like, oh no. So we look under and sure enough, there's a bunch of oil coming out. And um, so we turn the engine back on. You can see it squirted all up in the top here and everything. And so we turned it on uh, just to see if we could get the oil leak to come back. And sure enough, it was just leaking like crazy down onto everything. And so... Um, what happened is it's at this filter, um, so we posted online and we didn't know what this thing was, so we're like, hey, what is that? And it turns out it is a filter for the power steering stuff, and you can see up there that there's something that's broken. <laughs> so what ended up happening is this, uh, I think it's like a 90 degree fitting, just, yeah, just quit on us. So um, you can see it's all corroded so now I've got to try to get the threads out of there see if I can save the thread so I'm going to try to extract it but like I said bus life never gets old so here it is so I'm glad we found the leak because at first we were like why the heck would it be leaking like that and so um we're pretty sure that's the leak because it I went to go put a wrench on this and turn it and the whole thing just kind of like fell over and I was like oh no and then it just came apart so this is definitely the leak. Um, the surprising thing is, is the power steering didn't huh? stop working when that happened. So um, anyway, we're going to take this out and see if we can find another little fitting. Um, maybe in something stronger than this looks like it might be brass. So um, and then uh, see if we can't get this fixed up and then actually have a solar day. So anyway, that's what we're working on right now. Six and a half hours later. All right, so I only had to fight for like an hour. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, the extraction tool actually was too long, so I cut the end off with the, I put it in a vise and cut the end off, and that seemed about perfect. So I got the extraction tool in there, and I was able to get it out, thank goodness. So here's the original piece. So <clears throat> I went to Napa to, uh, to get a replacement and they didn't have one. So the guy was like, look, I don't have one. He's like, but I can kind of get something that might work for you. And he gave me this. And so this terrified me, one, because there's so many joints, but two, because it's so far out here. This one already broke, I think, because the hose is too heavy and it just ripped it off. This one is gonna break for sure. It's way too long. So I went to another place, which is a pipe store, and they gave me this one. And so the cool thing about this one is it's a steel part, and it should be much, much stronger than, um, than this brass piece. So anyway, we're going to try this. Hopefully this fixes it, and then we can get onto the solar stuff. So this is the part we're going to try to put in right now. And um, yeah, this tool is a cobalt tool from Lowe's saved us today so this was a huge pain so anyway that's a win for us this time morning we are finally ready to start putting the solar rack up so our friends Jonathan and Ashley from tiny shiny home and their family are gonna come spend the day with us and help us work on this project today so you'll see them a little bit um, our first step is gonna be to put the unistrut up on the roof um, using probably the upper racks to make sure they're spaced properly and centered properly and then we will drill holes through the roof and bolt 
that unistrut through the roof. Um, we'll go ahead and put some sealant on all of that when we're done. Um, but that is step one, is getting the unistrut installed, bolted through the roof. And then once that's in, um, <clears throat> it'll just be a matter of taking up all the different pieces and bolting it all together. So uh, goal for today is to get that unistrut put on. So we'll be starting that here shortly. Right, good morning so yesterday we got quite a bit of work done so we brought all the unistrut up here then we secured it to our upper racks just to make sure everything was lined up and the way it should be and then we proceeded to drill about 72 holes in the roof to mount it down so um, to mount it we used 3 8 inch 
grade eight hardware um, mounted through the roof but through a one and a half inch by one eighth inch plate so everywhere along the bottom we mounted a big plate and then the bolt goes through then a rubber washer then the roof another rubber washer then a stainless steel washer then a bolt to cinch that all up and then now we're gonna put another washer and then the unistrut will sit on that so it gives us about maybe half an inch uh, that the unistrut sits on top of the roof so that rain can go ahead and go off the side so the rain isn't trapped in this like central channel so um, <laughs> we got to test that theory last night because it rained pretty good so it started raining at about I'd say about midnight and it didn't stop until about six or seven this morning so for Arizona that's a pretty good rain so we've got a little bit of flooding in our yard and um, it, there's evidence that it rained pretty hard so and we went inside checked all of our all of our where we had screwed through the roof and there was not a single leak so we think we've got a pretty good system for that. So we couldn't have done any of this though without our friends help, uh, Jonathan and Ashley from Tiny Shiny Home. They came yesterday and spent the entire day with us drilling and bolting and welding and <laughs> you feeding name it. us. Uh, feeding us. So it was great to have them and we got the whole thing semi-mounted or at least sealed um, in one day and it was a big deal because we knew that there was going to be rain probably tonight and there's probably going to be rain again um, tomorrow night and so we wanted to get this all sealed up at the very least um, before those rains came so anyway we got it done and now we're going to go back through and actually put sealant all along each bolt all right so here we can kind of see we can come in and see the detail of how this is done. So this is just a washer that sits on top for the unistrut. <clears throat> this bolt is bolted down. This is a stainless steel washer and then we have a rubber a rubber uh, seal here and then underneath it on the inside we also have a rubber seal. So that seems to be doing a good job of keeping the weather out but rubber doesn't do the best with UV. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and put some UV resistant sealant all over the bolts and stuff and seal them all up nice and tight. Um, we'll do the same here for the vents and um, then we'll call, we'll bolt this all down and then we'll call the rack actually installed. So. All right, so we got the passenger side all sealed up. So we've sealed up all of the, all of the holes with uh, Trem Pro 635. So um, this is the stuff we're using right here. It's called Trem Pro 635. So um, we've had really good luck with this. We use this on all our patches and stuff. So um, we're just using it now to, to fill these all in. So now we'll drop this side down and we'll lift this side up. And we've gone ahead and yesterday we made sure the panels all fit in these things correctly so that they're square and everything. So then we made a little mark where in the front where everything should line up. So now we'll tilt this side back down, we'll bring this side up and we'll do this side, and then we'll just put a washer and a bolt on each one and then it'll be nice and secure. So we wanted to show you a little bit of how we installed the inside. Um, so the inside is this one eighth inch by one and a half inch um, steel um, bar. And what we did is we cut lengths in between the ribs. And so you can kind of see here, um, the bolt goes through there. So the bolt head goes through there and then it overlaps with the, um, with the ribs. And so if it starts to pull, you know, if we get a big gust of wind and and the, and something starts to pull up, it'll it'll not just be pulling up on the aluminum skin, but also on these on the on the big bars. Of course, the aluminum skin is also riveted in. So this just basically acts like a big giant washer underneath this whole area. So we did this all the way along, um, putting uh, th about three bolts. Uh, other than these real short ones, only got two. 
but about three bolts in each section. So um, there's quite a few bolts up there. So that's how we did the, uh, the bottom of them.